V Rising is a brand new isometric multiplayer vampire survival RPG with a non-fixed camera that's recently released on Steam Early Access. In this game, you'll create your own vampire, freshly awakened from the crypt, then hunt down victims to regain your strength. As you progress, you'll build a giant castle, enslave humans with high quality blood that you can then siphon from them for buffs, craft powerful equipment, and hunt down bosses to extract knowledge of new abilities and blueprints. As a vampire, your biggest weakness is the sunlight. Standing in the sun during daytime will see you burned to a crisp within seconds, so you'll need to confine your movements to the shadows if you want to navigate the world during the daytime. V Rising currently comes with four different game modes, PvE, 3-4 player PvP, duo PvP and full loot PvP. In this video I'll be giving you my first impressions of the game from the point of view of a mostly solo PvE player. Pros and cons list at the end of the video, but first, sponsor. Bloodline Heroes of Lithas, the brand new strategic card based RPG and hero collector that's just launched on Android and iOS as of June 23rd, 2022. As you can see from the visuals, this is one of the few mobile games of this genre that actually has a traditional western fantasy theme with realistic 3D graphics, where not only can you collect champions and build your kingdom, but you're also able to create half-blood heirs for your houses by merging the powers of various bloodlines such as orcs, elves, lycans and demons. If you've ever been curious what it'd be like to interbreed various fantasy creatures, then this game lets you explore that. When it comes to gameplay, Bloodline Heroes of Lithas is exactly the type of mobile game that I personally like to play. Vertical screen display so I can whip it out on the go, relaxing strategic gameplay that's about positioning your heroes and building complementary teams, as well as AFK progression and gacha collection over a long period of time. Collect legendary heroes, join a guild, progress through the PvE campaign whilst earning AFK rewards every time you log in take on guild bosses, reach the highest level of the Spire of Champions, test your strongest teams against other players in the arena, manage your kingdom, build your economy, interrogate dungeon captives until they fight for your kingdom, and create powerful offspring by merging bloodlines of powerful fantasy races. These are just some of the things you can do in this brand new unique RPG. So click the link in the description below to play Bloodlines Heroes of Lithas now, and use code BLDHOL1 to start your your adventure with $20 worth of free rewards. Download now. V Rising Vampire Survival Sandbox Sandbox? Sandbox? Multiplayer Vampire Survival Sandbox. V Rising Multiplayer Vampire Survival Sandbox. I've never been a big fan of vampires, but this game's from Stunlock Studios, the creators of Battle Right, so hopefully the game's pretty fun. We'll go to online play. I'm going to choose PvE servers because I don't want to get ganked in full loot PvP. And comfy PvE. Yeah, that sounds like a good one to learn the game. Decent connection. Let's jump into it. Character customization, choice of male and female, as well as a whole spectrum of skin colors. Eye color. That's the most important one. A few different hair options. Let's go with this one. Yes, I want my vampire to have a big beard. Accessories, you can have different glasses or big ears. Character name, Peon. And we're straight into the game. So this is one of those isometric games where you can actually move the camera. Move around with W, A, S, and D. Spacebar kind of blinked me forward. Testing, testing. So middle mouse button activates push to talk. Jump down, shift. Hold to drag. This is another player. I'm dragging whatever it is. It's going to take a bit of getting used to. Your character faces whatever direction the mouse is in. So we smash up the environment and we can collect bones. Left the crypt and now we're outside. You can whack trees as well. Okay. Yeah, it seems like you can whack everything. Fuck it. Just destroy the whole place. So now I've unlocked crafting a bone sword. This game seems really cool so far. The gameplay is buttery smooth straight away. Decent audio visual feedback from the combat try this ability. Big damage. I'm not seeing any weight limit in this game. If that's the case, then I'm happy about that. Oh, wait. I'm standing in sunlight. The daylight, it burns. Get in there. We'll loot it and we'll get out quickly. Oh, sunlight hurts. Can I eat rats? Okay, eat the rat. Fucking delicious. I leave this gate and I can choose to start from the west woods or the east woods. Let's go with the east. This is the world map. It seems pretty big. Oh, what's this? It looks like a boss. It's got a skull next to its name and in MMOs, that means it's very strong. How strong is it? Too strong. I was hitting ones on that treant. Definitely 
need to get away from that. Oh, I see. So different weapons have different uses. For example, chopping trees with the axes seems to be better. Whereas if you smash rocks with the mace, that's better for gathering stone. Makes sense. But you can also do it with swords if you want to as well. So this is the point where I need to start building. If I'm going to build my home base, I should probably head towards the center of the map a little bit more. Because it's going to be a pain if my house is here and then I'm exploring all up here. These are like vampire hunters or something. Thief, poacher. We don't want to go near them. Stay in the shadows. I think this area here looks like a bridge. <gasps> Fucking hell, that scared me. It's a boss. I was about to say it's a good place for a base. <laughs> Maybe not. That could have been the end of me. The sun is rising. Day 63. Oh my god, the sun's just rose and I am not where I want to be at all. Oh, there's a boss there. The sun's out and there's poachers around. What do I do? What am I going to do? Being a vampire in the daytime is not easy. Oh god, there's a whole squad of hunters here. Pain. The sun is changing the location of the shade as well. Good thing I collected all of this wood. I've almost got everything I need to make my castle already. Brilliant. So now I can build a coffin. Now if I die, I can respawn here. I'll put the sawmill right here. Who has a sawmill in their house? Me, apparently. Bear. Ooh, level 18. It's just an animal. Maybe I can kite it. Come on then, you little bitch. Dodge. Surprise, motherfucker. <gasps> Sun is rising. Oh no. Sorry, Mr. Bear. This morning, I'm gonna have to say uh, farewell. Got myself a new set of gear. Now we're looking a bit more menacing. So far, I'm having a really good time with this game. I've just hit the hour mark with my playtime. And the early sense of progression has been really enjoyable. Saying that though, that is usually how things go with survival games. Early sense of progression, super strong. But as you get further into the game, it typically becomes more and more grindy. So I guess we'll see how long this game remains fun. But so far, so good. So I've just constructed the blood altar. Hunt powerful blood characters, drink their blood and claim their power and knowledge for your own. They give different structure recipes, various different powers. Uh, this alpha wolf gives me a power that allows me to turn into a swift creature. Okay, let's track the blood of the alpha wolf. It's night time, I'm level 20, just upgraded all of my stuff. Let's get out there and go hunt. I see some- Ooh, that's an alpha wolf. Level 16. Okay, let's go. This thing's like a little boss. All of his attacks seem to be dodgeable. Use my skill shots. <laughs> This is cool. Come on, finish him. There it is. Hold to extract blood. And we're going to take his power. New blood unlocked, Alpha Wolf. Yo! Okay. Now we can travel throughout the world much easier. What is this? Leader the Chaos Archer. That seems like a boss. One, two, three shots of the arrow. Oh. No! Yeah! Oi! <gasps> Dude, these bosses are no joke. Oh god, I'm just gonna fucking- I don't know if I'm gonna die to the sunlight or to her. Just give me some shadow, please. Shadows. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god, I'm getting scorched alive. I'm just gonna fucking die. The moon is rising. Thank you, moon. I was so close to dying. She's actually almost dead. Hold to extract blood. Go. That's my blood. Did we get it? Yeah, we got it. Oh, what is that? Militia brawler. Oh, level 30s. Okay, wait for them to cross the bridge. And then we're going to sneak past them. This game's super engaging. Like, constantly having to look around and see what enemies are about. Planning your movements. Keeping track of resources. I have found it incredibly engaging. Okay, back to base. And now I've unlocked the ability to craft a tannery. There it is. Let's go hunt for our next boss. This person unlocks a woodworking bench, which we're going to need. My dude deals too much damage to fight him from close range. Oi! Got him. There it is. Give me that blood. We just looted a weapon. Bone crossbow. Let's go. Oh, it actually does pretty decent damage. So now I can play fully from range if I want to. It's really cool how just navigating the world in the daytime, you really need to think about how you're moving due to the whole shadow thing. Seems like a really unique game. It's just something about the way this game's designed is incredibly engaging. Like staying in the tiniest bit of shade during the daylight and having the shade constantly move. It's almost like you're playing a game of the floor is lava. But in this game, anything that isn't shade is lava. This boss is popping off. Ooh! Dude, the bosses in this game are no joke. Oh no. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not good. Run. Run, run, run. No, 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 we died. So have I lost all of my shits? Uh, 
fuck. Please don't tell me I've lost everything. Okay, I've kept all my weapons, but all my resources are on the floor. We need to be quick. I think all of my stuff is intact. Container, take all. Thank you. Maybe another player could have taken all of that stuff. I'm not sure. Thankfully, we got back in time. So now I've moved up to copper weapons. They actually have an additional ability on them. That's huge. I just logged back into the game after dinner and I'm dead. Ah, uh, that's what happens when your house doesn't have a roof on it. Being a vampire sucks. Silver coin. Interesting. Carrying silver? Oh, this actually hurts me. Of course. Vampires don't like silver. That's crazy. This game's thought of everything. Dude, I cannot shit in the forest for two seconds without a fucking creature attacking me. Oh my god. There's bombs. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Don't transform into a vampire now. Don't. Oh, not good. Not good. I don't want to die here. I don't want to fucking die here. Hold to mount. Go, 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 go. Get me out of there. Oh my god, I need safety. Oh, I'm so fucking far away from my base. If I was to die there, it'd be a disaster. Thank you, Mr. Horse, for just being in the right place at the right time. Oh my god, you can attack whilst mounted. Let's go. Here's the boss. Cliff the fire starter. Okay, thankfully my friend's also fighting him. Now this is the good thing. <laughs> Now the sun's coming up, of course it is. God, it's so much easier when there's other players helping you out. Dude, if this is like the early game bosses, I can't even imagine how tough the end game bosses are. I'm not even halfway through all of the bosses in the game yet. Come on, he's soon down. Yes, let's go. That was the hardest boss in the game so far, by far. It's like I'm saying this with every boss I'm fighting now. Every new boss is the hardest boss. Let's not bomb. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. That's a fucking disaster. That's about 20 minutes of running. I've lost everything. Dude, fuck. Oh my god, you're a hero. <laughs> what a fucking legend. Dude, shout out to you. Thank you so much. You've just saved me so much pain. You don't understand. That is so lucky. I needed a hero and a hero is exactly what we got. Let's take this mount and get my ass back home. And we've arrived home on my noble steed. Feels good to have a horse. Can I bring him in my house? Oh my god, it's almost 3am. Hours just go by so quickly playing this game. Because you've constantly got different goals to do. And it's like, okay, I'll do one more thing. I'll do one more thing. And you can't stop playing it. It's been such an enjoyable first four and a half hours of playtime. I'm not sick of the game at all yet. And even after four and a half hours, I just feel like I've only scratched the surface of the game and there's so much more cool stuff to explore. I haven't even left this part of the map. There's the Hallowed Mountains, Cursed Forest, Dunley Farmlands, Silverlight Hills. I'm still in the bloody starting area. I like how you can just build over what you had previously. The building's pretty well done in this game. It's quite snappy. It's not clunky or anything. There we go. I can actually see the roof on my castle now when I'm outside. Insert a charmed human to start conversion. Vampire servants will defend your castle and can be sent out to hunt. Okay, that's cool. Use dominating presence to convert a human to a servant. I have unlocked a new ability, this dominating presence thing. So now we're doing kiss of the vampire. We're channeling this on him. It is working. Okay. <laughs> So now he's following me. It takes an hour and a half though. This game's so cool. From what I can tell so far, it's got so much content and so many things to progress and work on. We've actually unlocked an ultimate ability, Merciless Charge. Let's preview this ultimate ability. What does it do? Ooh, that's cool. I love that you can just change your build on the go in this game. It's really cool. As you can see, we're definitely at that point where my castle needs to be expanded. Additionally, something that I didn't realize is if you create a separate room for certain things, like themed rooms, like one production room, one tailoring room, one study, and have the correct flooring, it gives you a bonus by reducing the amount of resources you need to craft stuff. My castle's certainly in need of a bit of a rebuild to be honest it's been about an hour and a half my servant is just about converted we get to name him george rise george okay george what are you gonna do you just mindlessly gonna go hunt that deer are you so he's just gonna chase this deer fail at killing it and just loop over and over <laughs> 
Oh my god, I waited an hour and a half to do that. So at this point, I've been recording for about seven to eight hours, possibly longer. I've just about finished the Farbane Woods, and I'm at the point where I need to head to the Dunley Farmlands. So we've essentially finished the starting area, which is probably enough for this first impressions video, and I've got a decent idea of the game. For me to progress much further, it's going to require a lot of grinding. But for now, we're going to wrap it up here. Done. Wait a minute! Something ain't right! After I'd supposedly wrapped up the recording of this first impressions video, I found myself still wanting to play the game, so I continued playing it in my spare time. I was expecting to hit a wall where progression stopped being so satisfying like in other survival games, but that wall never seemed to come. I took the entire next day off just to play the game. I soloed Tristan the Vampire Hunter at a 36 gear score, which at the time I found extremely difficult. He killed me a few times, but I lucked out by a random rock golem spawning and aggroing the boss. I love how NPCs of different factions fight each other in this game. It creates some interesting encounters where you can use that to your advantage to solo bosses. I continued progressing through the Dunley farmlands, I joined up with some other players to take down the Shadow Princess. I soloed Vincent the Frostbringer, I soloed Terra the Geomancer, really cool fight by the way, and I got a big necklace upgrade taking me to 53 gear score. The next boss I soloed was Mendriff the Archer which brought me firmly to the mid game when it came to progression. I was supposed to have wrapped up my recording of this first impressions video for V Rising, but after I stopped recording the next day, I just played the game all day and I made some pretty crazy progress. I've basically finished the Dunley Farmlands area and I'm at the process of moving from mid game to late game. So next I'd be going to the Cursed Forest, Hallowed Mountains and Silverlight Hills. But as you can see, I've really built out my castle quite a bit and I'm about to upgrade it to a tier 3 castle which should give me even more building space. Quick look at the gear, basically a full set of mid game gear, I've got myself a full set of iron weapons. When it comes to bosses I'm about halfway through the game, quick look at the abilities, I've got a lot more of those and I've also got a full ability deck here now that I've got iron weapons as my weapons now have two abilities attached to them as well as an ultimate ability. So the combat of this game has gotten much better the further I've progressed through it. I can now AoE down packs of mobs and just shred through enemies. Looking at the map, you can see that the castle space is very limited and every new person that joins the server is complaining that there's nowhere for them to build. But if you look up here, there's a lot of space. If only there was a way to take your castle from here and just somehow uproot it to here. I suppose you'd have to destroy everything and only get 75% of the resources. It might be worth it though at a certain point to do that. But realistically, that's beyond the scope of this video. Quick look at hours played, 25 and a half hours in three days. So this game's really grabbed me and hooked me in. It's just got such an enjoyable sense of progression and I'm definitely going to keep playing it beyond this video. Hopefully fully experiencing all of the PvE content. Boom. Pros and cons. Done. Mission Control, we have a belligerent dumbass here that won't cooperate. I was supposed to end the video recording for real this time, but I couldn't. I continued playing the game non-stop for the next two days. Eventually, I'd put in 54 hours within the space of five days. I'd moved my entire base and rebuilt a bigger, better castle to the north of the Dunley farmlands, finally having enough space to use my full 150 tiles. I had matching flooring on all my crafting stations for maximum buff. I'd unlocked every scroll recipe from grinding mobs, and I managed to solo Octavian the Militia Captain, which unlocks the Forge, the crafting station that you use to make late game gear. I also managed to get a full squad of 7 servants equipped to 57 gear score, as well as capture a 100% blood quality rogue and 100% blood quality brute to siphon blood from to become overpowered. By the time you're watching this video, I've probably put in over 100 hours and fully completed the game, as I just can't stop myself from playing it. Let's jump into the pros and cons now though, before I find another way to extend this supposed first impression into a full review and spoil the entire game. Pros. The combat feels highly engaging due to so many skill shots and the blood management slash health regen system. The fact that you burn during the daylight makes this one of the most engaging survival games out there. Simply get 
getting from A to B during the daylight requires your full attention. It also acts as a bit of a hard mode to take on bosses if you're too impatient to wait for the night. The sense of progression in this game is just amazing. I didn't hit an annoying grind wall during my 50 hours playtime so far. Every grind has felt reasonable. Every resource is useful. Anytime I left the base there was multiple goals and things I was looking out for, from bosses to high quality blood enemies to capture, rare resources, fishing spots, treasure chests, recipe books, schematics, and high quality horses. This is also one of the most solo friendly survival games I've ever played. Every boss I've fought so far seems soloable if you're at an equal gear score and have a decent build. The way you can mix and match different spells and weapons from different trees to create your ultimate vampire is very well designed. If you're stuck on a boss, just change build and try again. Everything seems to have its own situational use, and it's a system that can be changed at any point on the go. Visually, I think the game has a nice art style. I like that there's a lot of destructible environments Environments. The boss fights themselves are very well designed with decent mechanics. Building works pretty well. The user interface is clean. The game has a non-fixed camera, which isn't the norm for a top-down game. And for an early access title, there's already more than enough content to fully justify the price tag of the game. Cons. The only thing that's annoyed me so far since playing the game is following the blood trails when hunting bosses. It's difficult to see visually, doesn't track very well when you're moving through the world on horse, and you end up waiting around for the trail. I just wish this could be displayed a bit more clearly. Other than that, one nitpick is other players blocking your projectiles when boss fighting, even on a PvE server. Other players just ninja looting your boss and resources even if they've contributed no damage, and other players griefing your buildings. Overall, V Rising has came to Steam Early Access in the best possible way. It's already well worth buying with around 100 plus hours of playable content. The game runs smoothly, innovates on the survival genre, has great combat, great progression, is fundamentally well designed, and the devs have laid the foundation for an interesting world, and all of this is just from the point of view of pure PvE. There's also the whole PvP and full loot PvP option that I didn't even touch in this video, but based Based on the game's combat, I can imagine that also being really fun too. As someone that had no expectations for this game going into it, someone that never liked vampire or gothic themes, not the biggest fan of survival games, and not a huge fan of top-down games, this game took me by complete surprise and made me drop everything to play it obsessively for a few days, which is the highest possible praise I could give. I'm very excited to see what's to come in V Rising with future updates as it's laid a great foundation to build upon. And to answer the title of this video, yes, I think it is worth playing. But that's it for this video guys, as always I'd love to hear your thoughts on V Rising in the comments below. Did this game surprise you as much as it did me? What would you like to see added to the game in the future? Social media links on screen, don't forget to click the link in the description below to download Bloodline Heroes of Lithas, suck the blood out of that like button for the algorithm gods, and I'll see you in the next one.